All right. Hello, everyone. Yo, yo, yo. Yes, I see uh, some yo, yo, yo. happy Thursday greetings uh, in the chat here. <laughs> so happy Thursday, everybody. Uh, welcome. Welcome to The Great Transition. If you're new here, uh, this is the place to be if you feel that the world is going through an unprecedented change in our time and you want to kind of put the pieces together see the bigger picture make sense of it all and see how we can all as human beings find a common process that we're going through beyond all the differences or phone calls <laughs> of uh, beyond our differences of uh, culture and the political differences and religion and whatnot that's what we're doing here in the great transition we are um, looking at the natural process that humanity is going through through the prism of authentic Kabbalah and we're using that as, as a foundation to understand where the world is going, where it's headed, where we are. So um, today we're going to talk about time and space, aren't we? Is that what's going to happen, man? We are going to open up time and space. This is I've been waiting to, uh, to do this with you for a long time. Right. Uh, per perception of reality. Um, I think there's a feeling that uh, reality is how it is. And then if we recycled more or if we came up with electric powered cars or if we had robots to do some of the labor um, mm. or if we just all you know moved to Costa Rica and just chilled out a little bit, then everything would be better. <clears throat> and, um, you know, basically just take you were in a sandbox we have the, you know, whatever building materials we have available. And instead of building, okay, for example, even an easier one, you have a house and the sun rises, uh, the, sun, the, 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 the north side is colder, right? So put the windows on the south side so the sun can get in the house and then it's warmer instead of always doing it, instead of putting all the windows on the north and every time the wind blows, it gets cold in the house. It's just, there's this kind of thought that to make a better world, we just take the same building blocks but just arrange them a little bit better. If everybody would just stop being such an idiot and we could just, you know, arrange them a little better, everything would be better. But really what we're talking about in this great transition is this process of emergence, meaning when the hydrogen and the oxygen comes together, it's not just, oh, before the hydrogen was over here, now the oxygen was over there and we just switch them, but that something new, we tune in somehow, we, there's a reality that's here that we're not perceiving and that somehow through this process of uh, going through this great transition perceiving time and space well we're going to open up what it means how we're perceiving time and space now what it means in in terms of this whole process so it's very exciting because it's really um it's really not something we can speak about because how can you speak about a prepubescent kid about life after puberty it's like it's it's we need some other kind of perception vessel, perception, another sense, a sixth sense or something to perceive beyond uh, beyond that. <clears throat> um, you know, the Kabbalist uh, Rambam from about a thousand years ago, Spain, 1100, 1200, something like that. Yeah. Um, huge Kabbalist. Uh, he said that this whole world exists below the speed of light. Remember my right. song? Um, uh things that come from the heart the world exists below the speed of light my friends stay up and oh, stay yeah, all yeah, night. Yeah. yeah we'll have to do that one sometime <laughs> um so so einstein also said this world exists below the speed of light but um this is something that was you know at least a thousand years ago we have the same thing in in a in a kabbalistic book this is this comes from um not studying external phenomenon but from tuning into uh the reality that's out there and by understanding that we start to understand where our solution is i think that's one of the main things when we come to this wisdom one of the things that takes the longest amount of time and i see it all the time with new students coming in is actually understanding where the target is because you're just constantly okay all right all right so all my blocks in the sandbox were, were wrong instead of hating people now i have to love people or instead of doing this now i have to do like that or you know but but not understanding still where is the um the target i think that's what takes a long time to figure out exactly what i'm aiming at once you figure out what you're aiming at nature's doing 
the majority of the work anyway. I mean, you didn't, uh, you know, oh, let's put the eyes over here when you make a kid. It's like, oh, let's put the eyes here. Maybe we'll move the nose. No, nature does <laughs> all of the hard stuff in making a baby, right? You yeah. just need to find the person. Tell that to my wife. Date. <laughs> no, no, you know what I'm saying. You know, you need to, you need to, you know, maybe it'd be better if the ears were over here or something. No, you'd need yeah. to find the person and make a baby, but nature does all the hard work, you know, all the arranging and developing and trial and error through the years in order to, to put all the parts in the right place and, and, and all that. So the process of, um, I feel like you have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I, I am <clears throat> very, <laughs> I'm very interested in what you're saying, mostly in how does it relate to time and space <laughs> is what I'm asking. Okay. Well, 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 go with me. Um, all right, I'll try again. Um, how about this? So I'm uh, older than you, but when we had a TV in my house growing up, there was like two knobs. One I think said UHF, VHF or something like that. And the one below it, you turned uh, and there was maybe like 10 channels. I don't know how many it was, right. but it was like a knob, literally. Small TV, weighed a thousand pounds. It was like, you know, that big in the corner of the room. And on top of it were these two, um, two metal wires antenna wires and so when you wanted to watch a channel you literally had to had to move the antennas oh okay got it okay move the other one yeah okay yeah. got it so so basically the tv station was in the air <laughs> mm -hmm. okay and you're you're just kind of tuning this thing to be able to perceive what's already in the air okay with me so far yeah Sure. Okay. Okay. So, so just look for your launch pad. I'm going to keep trying to make a runway and you just look for <laughs> where you, where you can take off on this runway. Okay. So in the similar way, we exist in an endless field of light now. Okay. We are existing in an endless field of light. We are like that TV in a sense, we are tuned in to the light and each of us is tuning into it. Each of us is like a unique TV that's tuning into the light um, and getting a certain picture. Basically, what happens is matter, reality, dresses on the light. So there's endless white light. And the way that we perceive reality is that matter is dressing onto that light. It's dressing onto it through four degrees. We keep hinting at these four degrees one show will, will really open up what that what all, what that all is so you take two different people in different parts of of the world and they perceive the same white light but through depending on how their instrument is calibrated they perceive reality in a certain way some people feel that an hour is taking forever some people feel that an hour is going very fast. A Kabbalist is living in this world, but he's also so tuned in to the frequency that he's not stopping just at the material levels. He's also perceiving what's be behind that. So the, the, so you, we good so far? Am I, am I, am I clear? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're, you're um, the, the, the TV example is about how we um, we perceive um, we are perceivers of reality, and everything that we think of as real, potentially including time and space, is a construct of our perception. That essentially is what I get from your from your example. Is that where, where right. we're going? Yeah, I wanted to lay a um, the first building blocks, the first foundations of this perception, right? Just so we understand how we are and how we're perceiving time because if, um, yeah, that's, that's right. So, so there. our sense of, so our sense of time is uh, malleable. There's no, no doubt that this is so this is, you know, the, the easiest thing, uh, the easiest way to, to explain that is, you know, every, every child notices that when you're having fun, time flies and when you're suffering, time almost stands still but it's not just that our sense our, our experience of time is different you know and, and there's a lot of uh, 
uh, psychology uh, experiments where people are in different situations and they, you ask them what's the time before and what's the time after and you see that according mm-hmm. to the different adventures you put them through they experience uh, uh, time as being you know longer or shorter and so on but beyond that kind of psychological measurement there's also differences and 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 uh, malleability in the physical measurement of time which i find really interesting this is the i think you mentioned einstein it's uh, uh, at some point there you said einstein something anyway the the it was einstein who who came with the uh, the theory of relativity and the convergence of space and time into space time and uh, only later after his, his theories like later on they were able to measure uh, and do some experiments and actually see that, for instance, if you put um, a clock on, you know, uh, th- that on a plane that travels the world versus a clock that measures time on the ground, um, there are differences. Now, these are differences of, you know, uh, uh, a, a few billionths of a billionth of, of a second, but there are still mm-hmm. differences in how the clock measures time, whether it's standing still on the ground or it is flying around the world. So movement, velocity, speed also changes the physical measurement of time. It's not just our psychology that tells us my, this was more or less time. The time itself is, not, uh, is no longer uh, there's, anything fixed. Yeah, go ahead. There, there's stars that uh, absorb radiation instead of emitting and there's like talk in the scientific community that there's actually areas where time stops and areas where time flows backwards um Mm. so yeah there's our perception and then okay so you're 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 bringing another piece here that time itself is this malleable thing time itself yeah and the faster what what einstein showed was basically the faster you move the slower time passes and you could you could look at time because time uh, is inseparable from uh, space um, so just like we think of space as something that always exists right so space is out there um, meaning you think about all the it's universe the backdrop of it's it's every it's it's out there it just you know maybe you're there or you're not right now you're on planet earth Maybe uh, tomorrow you'll be on Mars and maybe the day after you'll be in Pluto or, or whatever. But the space, mm-hmm. we think of it as there, always there, all of it. So what, what, what Einstein is essentially saying is that basically we should look at time in the same way. All of time is always there at nice. all times. So essentially, I think, Chris, can you bring up... Um, uh, there, there's an Einstein quote where he says, uh, where he says that about the distinction between past and present and future, that it's that it's uh, uh, an imagination, something of that, something along those lines. Um, yeah, there we go. So the the distinction between the past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Yeah. So so you can look at time as something that we experience it as something that passes and we can only go forward we can't go backwards we can look at backwards but we can't see forward you know we have a limited perception of time but time in itself is not necessarily something that passes it's something that is potentially uh, always there but in what kind of reality in what kind of perception in what kind of experience do we experience time in that manner? Um, um, but certainly, I think the first point, and we'll we'll bring in some some. The deeper we go, we can maybe you know go deeper into what Kabbalah has to say about it. But the the I think the first kind of building block in in understanding time and space, which are you know uh, like uh, uh, an inseparable concept, really, is that to understand that there is something that we call time, we need to understand what that is. And then there's our experience 
of time. Both time and space, uh, uh, if you want to be accurate, you have to say, if you want to be empirical, if you want to be truthful, you have to say that they are, uh, uh, they are um, constructs that we experience. They are patterns of human thinking and not necessarily that they exist outside of us. Uh, there we go. Here's, that is another Einstein. Yeah, time and space are modes by which we think and not conditions in which we live. Nice. Yeah exactly so, so it's, anyway it's awesome yeah. that um that that uh modern science i'm concluding einstein in all that develops like this because it's it's really difficult for a caveman or, or primitive man to come to the spiritual realization uh, it's a totally different experience when we have we're in such a unique time mm. time we're in such a unique <laughs> time where even in yeah. science yeah. Although it's very interesting, the scientists won't be able to actually break this barrier because they don't have the, they'll start to understand what system they're in. They'll start to understand what the limitation is, but without the spiritual perception, they're still within the, what's that kind of expression? You can't jump onto the table until you jump above the table kind of thing. Like you need to be able to, um, yeah, you can't. Um, you Einstein to. himself. Again, we're 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 too um, uh, Einstein infused today. But there's another there's another famous Einstein statement where he says uh, that basically you can't understand your own level of thinking uh, unless you rise to a higher level of thinking. You can't understand problems on a certain level without rising to a higher level. You can't we, without understanding the level of thinking that created the problem. So th this is he's relating to scientific so, exploration and scientific so the, the, investigation, but that's essentially how how our mind works. Yeah, go ahead. The wonderful thing about modern science now, if we're really using the scientific method and not being biased because of politics or money interests, mm -hmm. but the discoveries of science, which is, is rare, by out, the way, which is rare. Yeah, but that's a tangent. Let's what did you say? I said which is rare, by the way. Super that, rare. That, yeah, yeah that, right. That, that science. Because the is findings are pure. always based on whoever's funding yeah. the science. And also so. coming from from uh, a few years in the academic world, you know, there's so much, uh, not just politics, but but dogma, dogma in science, which is supposed to be the the exploration of truth. And there's so much dogma and and things that are researched or not researched based on all kinds of uh, interest and, mm -hmm. and um, lack of uh, willingness to explore certain things, even though you should be exploring anything if you're about truth, right? But, you know, it's humans and humans are influenced by interests and politics and power and honor and money and all kinds of things. And that's why uh, science is very much influenced by that. But anyway, that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah, that's all, all super true, which makes us more difficult. But um, the real scientific discoveries um, are showing this, showing that uh, all, all of these things that, except what's beyond it, except the why. We talked about this before, that science is good at figuring out like the what, but not the why. Yes, um, the what but, and the but, how, I would say, but not the why, yeah. The what and the how, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's very, very um, relevant for us because then we can use all of these, um, if we can rely on all of these diagrams and all of the things that they show us to actually understand our reality because we're not relying on any kind of mysticism here. That's mm -hmm. again, like you could say it's mystical how a baby is born, how from like a drop of seed, like you know, does, a, does an Einstein happen? You know, does a person mm -hmm. like that come? Like, what did you do? What did, you know, like everybody's trying, how, how does a person form? There's a magic, you could say in, innate, that's not a magic, it's just natural forces that are in there. There's another force besides the mother and besides the father. Those two do a great job, but then nature does its part and, and you have a life. Hmm. Um, so it's not just taking a bunch of, you know, proteins and DNA and, right. and you know mixing them up. There's some other force in there that happens, and um, through looking at through through studying all of these, uh, what, what the scientists are able to show us, we can really understand the world we're living in, 
um, you know, some fundamental things that I don't think they understand that they, if they, I haven't seen it so much, but you know, the wisdom of Kabbalah, the primary matter of all of, of creation is a will to receive pleasure, like a will to receive fulfillment on every, every, everything that exists uh, on some level, inanimate, vegetative, animate, uh, or, or speaking, we're trying to draw to itself some pleasure. So we're perceived. Now you brought up something interesting, which is time exists by itself. I'm approaching it from a little bit of a different angle and we'll see how we braid these things together. But uh, the, the pleasures that I can receive that I'm yet to receive, that's how, uh, that's how we measure the future. Mm-hmm. Looking back on what we did receive, how we received it, that's how we perceive the past. So if there is no opportunity to ever receive any fulfillment, so then there's no movement of time. Then it's it's almost an, 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 until you come to a point of, of death. So um, when the more that science, you know, sober authentic science really starts to understand the nature of the reality and starts to paint it to us. We lay everyone people will be able to come to these sublime degrees more and more easily because we'll start to understand what is the system we're in? How is it operating? Of course they need to have the, the why on top of it and able to be able to use it. Okay. So fine. So we did all, you know, we had the, the collider. What's the hot, the, what's the hydrogen? The The large hedron collider. Yeah, you got the collide, you got that, you got Einstein science. Ah, yeah. mm-hmm. you, you have all, all of this science. Um, so what? You know, what are we going to turn it into some Silicon Valley tech company out of it, or how is it going to help us? <laughs> how is it going to bring peace on Earth? How is it going to fulfill all of humankind? So it's not just the discovery; it's also understanding the story behind it who we are, who are we what's what, what are we doing here right what's the purpose Under, of these understanding discoveries? the story that's that's actually that's profound because the we can when thinking about time and space especially time um we need to think about it more like a story you know the the um, again if time if all of time all of the instances of time, all the moments of past, present, and future, if they are already there, then life is more like uh, watching a movie rather than um, you know going through some unknown random events. But we're more like just experiencing a frame and then another frame and then another frame just because we're not the director. We're not so in the I'm director's seat. Place and reality is dressing on the light in front of me constantly. It's like I'm yeah, some you know, point. In- you know what? We gotta. I, I think we're. Uh, we gotta. We gotta put some. Um, we gotta put some some foundations here because we're, we're maybe Please talking put. in 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 a language that um, not necessarily understood by all our viewers, depending on uh, how long they are they're listening uh, and are how, how familiar they are with the wisdom of Kabbalah. Anyway. Um, so, okay. So I think, you know, go, going back to, to science and what, what we learned from, from Einstein about how time is like a stubborn, uh, illusion that we are in. It's just a, it's just a very persistent kind of illusion. There's also an understanding in science that time has a beginning. It is most scientists today, most physicists agree that time started about 14 billion years ago. Time has a beginning. It, it They don't know if it has an end. They don't know if it has an end or not. Spoiler, should I do a spoiler? Kabbalah, a Kabbalah spoiler? Yeah, not yet. Okay, not yet, Kabbalah, spo- Kabbalah spoiler, time does have an end. We'll get there, but <laughs> just just a quick spoiler. Okay. okay I, by now, the way, I voted now, to not give the answer away so quick, but all right. Oh, really? I thought I thought you were in favor. I like okay. the build up. No, uh, but wait. The, it's still a question. It's still a mystery. What does it mean that time has an end, and how does that work out? We'll pay it off. I hope. But um, 
But time has a beginning, science says, and that beginning is almost 14 billion years ago. What happened before time? That's already a contradiction in terms, isn't it? Before time. But what preceded time? Let's try to be more accurate than with our language. What caused, what is the causality that created this time that apparently we experience as an illusion of the passing of time that we cannot, that we experience, can't stop, can't go uh, backwards, can't look forwards. What created that experience of time and space for that matter? What, what created it? And so this is where Kabbalah steps in and can actually provide us with answers um, and science just can't because that depends on uh, an attainment of the reality that precedes matter, the reality that precedes the Big Bang, the reality that is the causal level, the informative, um, uh, non-material level of reality that gives rise to everything that we see and hear and can feel and touch through our five senses in this physical reality. In other words, we have to understand what happens uh, uh, before, what happens as a, as a cause that preceded the Big Bang. And so, I'm, 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 if I'm going to go there, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try be, to be brief here because, you know, it's not a full-on uh, Kabbalah course here, but... But um, but if it gets too much, then just just stop me and, and whatever, take it in whatever direction it should go. So before the Big Bang, um, we, all of us and all of reality, you and me and, and everyone in the chat right now and everyone in the world and all of the world and all of the still vegetative and animate, all of the billions and, and, and billions of planets that exist, this whole universe was one thing. Now, again, this is something that even if you go to the origins of the universe, the Big Bang, you go to the physicist's explanation, they'll tell you that all this universe started from one point that, that was a tiny little point that then expanded and exploded. They call it the, the inflationary expansion. That's, that is, that's essentially the explosion that happened in the Big Bang um, from which the, the universe began to, to expand. But even before that point is already a material physical explosion. Before that material explosion even happens, there is a non-material spiritual entity, an essence of all of reality, all of creation, that is all one. And in that state, when there is oneness, there is no time and space. I, I saw, I, I think I saw earlier, someone on the chat said, um, where was it? Uh, Isn't experience itself a function of time? Um, um, I, I would I would rephrase the question and ask, what is time as an experience? What is it a function of? And time is a function of separation. So back to that state before the Big Bang. Reality is this one singularity. Kabbalists call this state one, unique, and unified. That's the definition, and it's not a poetic definition. It's a very technical definition. It means that the quality that is felt, that exists, that is dominant in that state is the, the quality, is one quality, a single quality. It's the quality of pure, unconditional bestowal that is beyond self-interest. So it's something we can't understand. We, we can call it unconditional love, unconditional bestowal, but we don't understand truly what it is. It is the giving force that governs everything else that we see in our reality in nature it's the governing program behind that gives life and sustains and guides all of nature all of reality so behind before the the reality of of this world before the big bang there is only this one quality of bestowal that dominates everything and it is 
unifying all of creation as one. And there is nothing, it, it is singular, it is unique, there is nothing else. So that state of, of oneness is a state that has to be beyond time and space because there is nowhere to get to. There is nothing that needs to happen. Again, Kabbalists call this, another term for it, a state of complete rest. This is the state that creation is in, in the beginning, before the Big Bang. In the very beginning, there is a created being, but it is in complete adhesion and connection and bonding with that governing force of reality. And so in that state, there's no time and space, but... What happens over a process that we will skip entirely <laughs> because we, we really don't have the, you know, this will take uh, a lot to get into. But what happens then is a process that the, the climax of it or the, 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 the peak of it. The, the opposite. Is, <laughs> well, what? The bottom most climax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe to put it like that, it's hard. it depends on where you look at it. But yeah, the the a process that reaches um something kabbalists call the shattering so the shattering is a situation where that creation that was one unique and unified where all the pieces are one where creation is one with the force that created it where everything is is um beyond time and space and there is no separation that creation is now being shattered what does that mean? That means that instead of one, there are many. Instead of um, complete rest, now there is movement. Instead of uh, a situation of complete connection and bonding between the governing force of nature and the force of creation, the created being, now there is separation between them. And so that still happens um, on a spiritual level and in spirituality again there's no time no physical movement no physical space there's only qualities frequencies that of varying degrees of bestowal and when the created being begins to be separated from that frequency of bestowal it gains independent on the one hand it becomes aware of itself on the one hand, but on the other hand, it becomes removed from that reality of oneness. It becomes removed from, distant from that reality where there's no space and time. And that process continues until uh, it reaches the very um, last spiritual degree so of, let me chime in for, yeah. for for a moment before you before you give the 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 end there. Yeah, the the, the there there <laughs> you should have stopped there, me earlier um, probably. There's uh that was beautiful. There's um I just want to touch on on why this whole process happened. Like why did there need to be a shattering? Why did so prior everything is, you know, if you're um if you're a a piece of that light or something it, there's no conscious awareness, so to speak, right? Even when you were born, when you were one year old, you didn't even know who your mom was. You didn't know anything. Um, so imagine perceiving that oneness. I mean, it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine, you know, we cry from a beautiful piece of music or a beautiful movie. I mean, could you imagine feeling the unification of all of reality? Hi, it's my you would need another you know cup you need something to hold that otherwise it's it's just too much before so the the process that happened before material reality is this whole kind of sorting out of okay so everything is just one complete one unique and unified what does it mean one what does it mean unique what does it mean unified these are different aspects but what what is that until we need to to have some kind of creature that can actually enjoy all of this because we're just we're endlessly everything in all directions forever there's no in, in that there's no um 
you know, if I just pour sugar down your throat, you know, from the beginning to the end, there's no flavor. There's no sweetness anymore. It's just, it, it's gone. You know, if you just, you're cold and you just go in front of hot water and then you just sit there for 10 years, it's, it's not an enjoyable, warm experience. All right. of the things that we experience come from the combination of these different sensations. So yeah, the whole contrast. process. So, yeah. mm -hmm. From contrast. Yeah. From contrast. So endlessly bestowing love and light, which filled reality before creation. Creation itself is the contrast of the light. And by that creation is how we can come to perceive um, that light. And the purpose of that shattering is only in order that the creature can feel, can perceive that light. Yes, that's that's a critical addition. The, the, the reason, the whole purpose for the shattering and the separation of the created being from that state of oneness, why do that? Is in order for the created being to develop its own desire, its own independence, its own consciousness, so that it can actually consciously experience the oneness that it is in. But in the meantime, what we have is this shattering, this separation. And so the ultimate state or the, the, the how do you say the lowest, like the, the, the most at the bottom, is there a word for that? The, the lowest, of, but of, um, like the, the most the bottom. uses it in a certain word. Hold on. I think there's a good word for it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the lowest, yeah. the lowest state, the, of that shattering of that separation is where there's complete detachment from the reality of oneness. That is the reality of our world. When, so, so imagine the, the, um, this is beyond time and space, right? So we're only talking about a uh, difference of qualities. Kabbalists call this disparity of form. That's what we're talking about, but I'll, I'll do it like this with my hands just to make it kind of easier to grasp. So if the created being was at first like completely bonded with that uh, force of one, with that oneness, with the quality of bestowal, it has now became, became separated and then more and more and more remote. Again, this is not in physical space. This is a difference of qualities. And at some point it reaches like a hundred percent oppositeness. When that happens, the um, the result of that is the explosion that we identify with our ordinary science as the origin of our universe. That is the point at which our universe, matter, the physical world, our physics, that's where it begins. And so what happens is that we... You, this was just, this, yeah. is, this is like, gives me the chills. Can you just rewind and do that one more time? So we are just talking about complete love, light, total bestowal, right? Until it descends and descends and descends and gets to the point that this physical world is, is going to be created. Can you just go over what, what, so what happens So we were again? all... Yeah, you did it. You did it better. So I'll. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, what what else can I add. But we we were all, all of us, all people, and animals, and plants and planets. Everything in the universe was one, and this one creation, this one created being, was unconsciously glued to the complete quality of bestowal that created it, a quality that gives life, a quality that um, its whole uh, being, it's, it's, it's only, it only has one vector, and that's giving, pure giving, warmth, love, bestowal, however you call it. It is this, a this spiritual way, if, quality. So Melissa yeah. Holden asked before uh, exactly what exploded. So when, when you give this answer this time, you know. What, it, what is it that exploded? And, and and say what you did, yeah. That's that's a very technical. We'll have to get very technical here because the the 
the created being goes through 125 degrees of separation between the first state of unconscious adhesion with that initial thought of creation, that initial governing force connection with it, to complete disconnection with it. And then, but, but, the, the, um, but the, the light, that's what you called it, the light or the, the quality of bestowal and the quality of the created being, which is the opposite quality of reception, those qualities, they're always intertwined as, as the created being goes down 125 degrees. The, the entrance of the very, the most reduced spark of bestowal, of the quality of bestowal, when it permeates the substance, the spiritual substance called the will to receive, that exactly is the Big Bang. That entrance of, of the spark of light that enters the lowest layer of the will to receive, that is called, that is what uh, uh, initiates the, this explosion that creates the experience of matter. Um, but but I don't I don't know how how clear that will be without explaining very the, clear you know no, the entire this was process. Nice. So basically, the, when it turns the 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 separation between with this formation of this will to receive opposite and detached from the that other force that is the beginning of the physical reality. Of yeah, maybe physical. we should. Yeah, yeah, we should we should say we should say that um, from a kabbalistic perspective everything that exists everything and anything in reality is at, is really at at the core at the causal level is only made up of two forces the giving force and the receiving force um, light and kli as we call it in kabbalah the quality of bestowal and the quality of reception uh, sometimes we call it the intention to bestow and the intention to receive the creator and the created being and these two qualities they continuously interact and and this interplay between them creates um, uh, creates all of the spiritual degrees from the the beginning the initial state of creation all the way down to that big bang and also everything that happens with our material evolution the creation of atoms and then the, the, their connection and integration into molecules and other compounds and, and organisms and superorganisms and plants and animals and people and conscious human beings that evolve and so on. All of that is just the, the, the light and the kli, uh, the quality of reception, the quality of bestowal, constantly creating the next level of life between them. Time. Funk, funk the Let's go back to time. Why? Why? Okay, okay. I wanted to ask her, uh, do one more question. Um, Funk, you want to wait? Uh, whatever you think. Okay, maybe it'll help uh, to, before you get back to, to time. Mm -hmm. So Funk the Doc says, isn't the sixth sense uh, just hallucinating? So that's what's very special about this method. And what science is helping open a little bit is, is a soft described that descent of those 125 degrees that's observed, that's attained by the Kabbalists, by the scientists who reached those things and then wrote about those things. The sixth sense, what we mentioned before in order to, um, to feel the why and to feel the how, it's, it's not hallucinating. It's specifically attainment. That's what this whole method is about. It's about it's about specifically reaching these things, um, and maybe we'll get it. I don't know if we'll have a chance today to uh, really get into how that happens, but um, yeah, it's not this perception of beyond time space. It's not about uh, you know putting a, a hit of acid on your tongue or eating some mushrooms or licking a frog or, or, you know, or I don't know, <laughs> doing breathing exercises until you, um, you perceive beyond the boundaries of your skin, so to speak. But this is about a method of, of reaching a, a, that attainment. And it is literally a sense the same way that an eye is a sense. The other five senses are senses. It's also a sense. Now how to form each sense has a special membrane, a retina, an eardrum, or whatever it is that, um, 
that we perceive something. So what is that mechanism? What is that um, masach, that screen, that, that membrane that we feel that upper light? Um, I'm not sure we'll have time in this story to get to it, but um, so back to our story. So time, time. Our, right? We wanted to do it. So, so that, that takes us exactly to understanding how time was created. So we, we already understand a lot of scientists, including Einstein, thought that, uh, and it's becoming clearer and clearer to us that time here is an illusion. The way we experience time and even space is, is not what it really is. And so here is what's happening um, through a Kabbalistic lens, right? So as, as the creation, this one creation became shattered, separated into many different pieces. I'm not going to go into the mechanics of this process, obviously, now, but there's a, 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 a very detailed description of how it happens, what pieces, to what pieces that substance of creation is broken and what kind of divisions and how they are shattered what is this the process step by step Th this is an incredible an incredible body of spiritual knowledge that came to us uh, mostly from the the re about uh, 450 years ago something like that the um and then from bala sulam who interpreted the the re less than 100 years ago uh, so this is also, and, and Kabbalah is a science that, that starts from um, about 5,780 years ago, if you want to be. Uh, the the RE, he came so, kind of from the end of the process, and he gave us the, the, the language called Sfirot and, and worlds and all of that stuff. Before that, we had this thing from the Abraham and the, the ancient gods. Yeah, but there was, but no, was a, so, there was no mechanical, technical... Right. Uh, uh, um, Accurate, um, accurate account of all the things that the previous couple the membrane were... specifically that we talked to the masach and, and all yeah. the like returning so, light and so so why am I am I saying that just just to say that that as we as we're discussing this because you know uh, some people may 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 think that we are you know that we are hallucinating as I hear so um, I just want to want to stress that you know Kabbalah just like just like the development of other forms of science. Uh, it's been evolving, except that that our you know ordinary science started what a thousand years ago, depending on where where you start, uh, you know, and and Kabbalah started almost six thousand years ago. So it just has more time, um, and so the the stuff that that we know today from Kabbalists, um, and we can talk about is fairly recent and new, and it didn't exist a couple hundred years ago. So. It wasn't as detailed. It wasn't as clarified. It's just like how, um, you know, Einstein discovers something, but only later on, other scientists are able to then go deeper into the detail and through more specific experimentation with better tools, they can now be able to, to you know, to detail the equations more or, or something like that. So a similar thing happen, happens with the, the evolution of the wisdom of Kabbalah throughout the centuries. The, 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 the sense of time and space that we have in this world is specifically because of that shattering, the separation between us, all pieces of reality. All of creation is one thing. We are part of that one thing. We are in a process from the beginning of, of creation, the, be the beginning of the Big Bang, we are in a process, right? This is where time begins. Scientists agree with this too. Um, time begins about 14 billion years ago. What actually starts, we don't understand it without the wisdom of Kabbalah, what actually starts 14 billion years ago is a process of the, the, the whole of creation going back to a state of oneness. That's the returning. weird thing. Yeah, go, go, going back, turning back, yeah. Th returning. That's the, returning, yes, exactly. That, that is what's so um, 
you know, weird to, to get your head around because it seems to us that, you know, the, the Big Bang is an explosion. Everything is expanding. You have the, the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is always increasing, right? Disorder, chaos. On the other hand, you see, look at biological systems and what you see is order. You see limitations on uh, and directions uh, over the atoms and molecules that that direct them into and regulate their organization so they can build new and more complex organisms and new and more complex level of levels of life so that's not so much entropy is it it's more order and more organization we can and more find complexity go ahead yeah we can find a great example here of the distant of the difference between the regular earthly scientist and the Kabbalist. So Darwin uh, said, "Okay, everything started at a point, and it's developing through survival of the fittest and different different things, and it's surviving in a certain direction." Comes the Kabbalist and says he points to the end of the show, and he says mm -hmm. that everything is developing to reach this. And it's not starting here in order, you know, and just moving through time this way. Kabbalah says, here's already where it's heading. And now I'm going to explain how, you know, how it, it got there and how it reaches there. Right. It's like so, looking at something from two different perspectives. So as long as we're in this process of the material universe gradually the creation that is separated gradually returning to oneness creating more and more complex connections and becoming gradually consciously connected as one again until that happens we feel that we are separated from that state that sense of separation puts us in a constant lack in a constant deficit and while we don't know exactly what that sensation is and we, we it's hard for us to put the finger on it what we experience is the passing of time because we are uh, distant from our state of oneness which means also distant from the fulfillment that we crave from that sense of connection and uh and and eternal bliss that we that we long for and so we're separated from it and that separation is something that we feel as the sense of of time and then there's also this these disparities of form between us these spiritual differences and um um conflicts between us this shattering to use the kabbalistic term this shattering between us gives us a sense of everything is separated. There are many. It's not one creation. There's many different things. That is what creates the construct of space in the material experience of our world. And so, the you know, there's a great um, there's a great quote, Chris. That can you can you pull up that um, uh, Rav Cook quote, um, or maybe maybe actually. You know what? We have a little bit of time. There's a Bala Salam quote as well uh, that I sent you earlier about um, about time. Let's start from that one. We we gotta re we gotta read this. This is really good. This is really good. The you got it. Okay, time and space. This is this is Einstein. Okay, we can go back to Einstein for a second. Actually, time and space are uh, are modes by which we think, not conditions in which we live. Go 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 to the Bala Salam quote. Um, uh, not, we can read this one too. The entire, the, the, okay, here's the one. <laughs> we'll read this one. Time in its spiritual definition is but a sense of changes, right? So there's cause and effect. There are changes that are always happening. Um, um, they, but we feel them as the passing of time. The human mind projects a number of successive changes as an imagined, amount of time go for go go yeah if one were at complete rest with his environment which is that state of that initial state of creation we are at complete rest there in that point of singularity 
one unique and unified, one creation connected with the force that created it, at that point, one would not know about the concept of time at all. And then go 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 to another one. There's another one I think uh, we put there. The next one. No, that's Einstein, and that's that's another Einstein. There's no no. There's there's one after that. Don't don't have it. No. That's that's all I got. That's all I got. Okay, so there there was um, there was another one from Ralph Cook. If you if you can find it, we can read it as well. Anyway, so. Um, here is the the cool thing yeah okay fine we can find it later um the um the the um the cool thing is this when we begin to work on that connection between us when we begin to identify that we're actually are pieces of one thing that we are indeed all one when we begin to practice this inner work this spiritual development of our consciousness when we begin to identify that that you and me and all of humanity and all of nature are one thing time and space will once again dissolve because they weren't there to begin with that's the that's the 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 crazy thing. Okay, this is, Chris. This is something, Chris, uh, really Chris to our aid. There we go. He found something. Okay, yeah, that's the quote. Can you go back one one like where to where it starts though? We gotta read this. This is a good one. Um can you go back to where it starts? I think it's one one before that. I think that's uh, in the middle okay, of the one quote. second. Give me another keep talking for like another twenty <laughs> seconds. Said what you were you were saying. Um this is something that's when we always speak about love, connection, and unity. Um, it's so much more than it just feels great to be together. And we've talked so many times about the health benefits of connection. And when I smile, you smile, you know, there's like that smiling game. And we talked about mirror neurons and really all and all and all of that is still playing with the same building blocks in the sandbox but now opening up this whole topic here somebody asked before i really want to know what that membrane is so you we have with from our skin inwards we have five senses you know that, that belong to me between in the connection in the correct connection between for example an eardrum it, the vibrations just don't enter into a hole in the head there's a membrane there that blocks the sound and some sound is rejected and then other sounds go in same thing with the eyes the light hits a membrane some light is is, is reflected out and, and some light goes in in learning a certain way to build a certain connection between other human beings right we've heard about the connection that mycelium have that they can travel underground and give messages and trees can communicate and whales can send to humans the highest degree the, the the crown of all of that creation when the humans connect in a certain way that is where that certain membrane is built that when the upper light that we talked about at the beginning with the tv when you're trying to tune into that frequency mm. together between the emotional relationships using the mind to understand where that target is and then between these emotion this love and this hate and all these forces working them between us we build in the air of course in the air uh, we build that membrane that that upper light because remember the light from the sun for example corporeal light not spiritual light it travels however many tens of millions of miles right but mm -hmm. all look at space it's totally black yeah you don't see anything <laughs> shining once it hits something then it illuminates so all of space is filled with light but all of space appears empty in the same way all of this space is filled with that upper light and what we're doing is just creating that something for that light to hit 
in the correct way and how to uh, how how to know how much of it should come in and how much goes out so that we can start to focus on reality nice mm. nice um we got to wrap up here chris do you want to you want to put the quote up the, um or do we have it yeah okay yeah there we go this is the one in spirituality okay it's a little it's a little more complicated than I, than I felt it was but um, so maybe we'll have to, to to give more commentary on it next time but it's it's nevertheless beautiful no no put it up Chris let's read it the in spirituality the potential does not lack the actual the potential does not lack the actual meaning everything is there um, to, to make it to make things easier only the thought of creation is needed in spirituality it doesn't need to materialize for the spiritual uh to, for the spiritual you don't need um any materialization the thought the thought that exists in spirituality the thought of creation which is to create a created being and raise it to the degree of connection complete connection with the force that created it that thought is enough as the potential becomes actual through time, and time is irrelevant in the spiritual. Okay, so when when the when the the spiritual information about what needs to happen, uh, about what the what the governing force of creation wants for its created being, when that information, that thought of creation materializes and becomes actual it happens through time but spiritually speaking it's unnecessary and there is no need for the actual there the 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 situa the state of connection in potential there is already sufficient and so you don't need time one who directs his desire in consequence right one who directs his desire towards the spiritual rises above time and to the extent that he rises the differences between the potential and the actual fade until there's no difference whatsoever okay there's a lot to interpret here this is from Rav Cook but but to, ma to make it a concluding sentence as we begin to work on um, our connection time and space which are illusions as science identifies illusions that result from our separation and shattering as Kabbalists identify as we begin to to reconnect and become one again time and space will disappear as well and we will begin to experience ourselves as a completely different kind of existence not separated individual material beings but rather a collective non-material entity that is one with the force that created it. Let's leave something for for uh, for a next show. <laughs> I think we tried to. I gotta say, we, we we tried to tackle something very big today. So um, um, I don't know. Beyond time um, and space in just one hour on the great. Yeah, transition. exactly. I would say to to all of our dear. Uh, friends uh viewers watching uh and with us jamming here uh in this in this conversation above time and space maybe throw in your your questions your ideas your suggestions for um what you'd like us to to focus on and to get into next time um so we can we can see what's left to uh to uncover it looks, it looks like all our friends yeah. uh on the great transition uh channel are really enjoyed today thank you everything everybody thank you timothy and julie and slightly slanted and david and p marlin and shannon and patricia and deborah okay thank you very much so they this was a good topic then um yeah we had uh, people connected from toronto spain ohio florida vienna you see above time and space vienna arkansas ireland italy portugal england pakistan north carolina vancouver miami norway texas beautiful let's go above time and space seth do you have a tune to help us do that sure 
Sure. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you next Lots time. Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern. All ah, right. We'll Not here. here Sunday. No, Thursday, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everybody. To take our first breath. To take our first action to be alive. On what is left.